This is Anderson Pence Podcast, episode 198 for Tuesday, July 5th, 2016. This is Brian. This is Lisa. And those are the neighborhood kids. This is the Anderson <laughs> Pence Radio Network. <laughs> I promise we have nothing to do with it. It's just way too hard to close my windows. I apologize. That was perfect. That was perfect. <laughs> they don't know that there is sort of, you know, the four people that will listen to this one. Oh, man. Anyway. Um, They're obnoxious. So here we are. Here we are. Uh, July happy 5th. July 5th. Uh, we hope you all had a really awesome weekend. And uh, some of you probably had a four day weekend, uh, three day, four day. Uh, well, yeah, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, at least. Three day. Yeah. I um, hope you got to celebrate with friends and family, but uh, still took a, a few minutes to reflect on the reason for the holiday. Um, we had a solid day and a half, which was awesome. Um, you know, it's the first year since we opened the store that Brian and I did not um, go and work at the store. We actually closed for the first time. It was kind of cool. Uh, I did go in. but Well, you did. And I worked at home. Um, so. But it was pretty cool to, to not be yeah. obligated to go at a certain time. Uh, it was very nice. Yeah, I just went for a couple hours, uh, pulled some orders, uh, did a couple things, and then that was it. So, um, but yeah, nice, uh, nice to have a part of a day off anyway, a day off. Um, and and uh, you grilled. So it's been, and I grilled out. Yep. And uh, so it was, uh, it was a good time. Was had by all. Yeah, it was really nice. It was really um, nice. We should do it again tomorrow. We should. Um, this week we're going to take a little different, a uh, different approach. Um, to the podcast slightly. Uh, there's a lot of new stuff that came in like in the last week. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through that and see if we can um, and uh, get that in. Otherwise it would take us we'd be here for an hour and I think we might melt. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's 81 degrees and it's eight o'clock, which means it was hotter earlier. But uh, and we don't have air conditioning. We don't have air conditioning yet live in a 90 year old house. Um, anyway, new arrivals this week, and there's a lot of stuff, and I've got pictures. Um, I don't actually have the items, but this will Wayne will be will be happier for it. Um, uh, I'm going to have to find him here, but uh, really, some really cool stuff come in that we, either we forgot that was coming in, or <laughs> uh, it just showed up uh, in new announcements. Uh, the first item this week, of course, is the Mont Blanc ultra black um, and this is we first found out about this pen i've got it here on my screen first found out about this pen what was it uh february march i think so um and uh really a really stunning looking pen and this pen comes in every size imaginable except for a 149 which is kind of a shame uh but actually kind of good for my pocketbook uh, it's cool it's got a matte finish uh comes in a legrand uh 146 uh Classique, a 144, if, if you know by the number. Uh, there's also a mid-size ballpoint. There's rollerballs, ballpoints, the whole ball of wax. Um, but it's got a cool matte finish, dark ruthenium trim, um, and even the um, the nib is ruthenium coated. Uh, and, and it posts. Yeah, and it posts. Yeah, here's a shot of the nib. Look at this. Isn't this cool? Um, 14 karat nib. You uh, can't pist have one. Yeah, piston filler, of course, on the on the Legrand, on the 146. Um, sweet, sweet looking pen. Um, I, I don't know. Would you say it's, it's one of the, the most interesting normal Meisterstücks they've come out with, uh, at least it's, since we've we've been a dealer. It it's different, but it's still mostly ha got that classic look. So it's it's kind of classic but updated. It is it is very interesting, and the texture is really cool. Yeah, the texture is cool, and it's got uh, you can see in the picture at uh, the top by the, uh, the 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 snowflake there. Uh, it's got a little bit of metal on the top of the cap above the clip, and that matches along with the piston knob being metal. So uh, it is a resin section. Uh, but a cool, cool looking pen. I think these are going to do do very well. People are you, you're going to hold this in your hand and you're going to uh, you're going to love it. So yeah. that's uh, that was the big news. Uh, we actually had 
the ball points, uh, the mid-size ball point, like two weeks early. It was supposed to be released on July 1st, and we, for whatever reason, had it two weeks early. But then the fountain pens came in um, last week. Uh, along with that, uh, we also got in the much um, awaited uh, new writer's edition for 2016, the William Shakespeare. And isn't this a couple months early? Um, I'd have to look. I, I, I think this was supposed to come out in July, so I think this is about right on, okay. right on par. Um, really, kind of a neat pen. I, I like this one better than some of the the other. Uh, although JFK was a nice looking pen, and, and so was the. Uh, um, but uh, you know, it's not bad. It's got the white section. It's kind of. I've got a shot here in in a bit that uh, I'll show the pattern on the barrel, but uh, piston filler, of course. Uh, Really cool pen, and it's got some interesting. Uh, it really covers William Shakespeare uh, fairly well, I think. Although he needs to work on his handwriting. He needs to work on his handwriting. I don't actually, <laughs> I don't have a picture here of his handwriting, but you can see it on the website. Apparently, from what I understand, is there's actually only one recorded. Uh, there's only one actual um, copy of William Shakespeare's handwriting, and it's really, really, really bad. Um, Here's an example of the pattern on the on the uh, on the barrel, um, and the the pattern is designed to be it's supposed to be uh, reminiscent of the quill pens that Shakespeare used, uh, but a very uh, very interesting. Now, along with this, and we're getting some comments in the uh, the chat, um, there will be matching inks as Mont Blanc does, uh, both for the Mont Blanc Ultra Black, uh, which is an Ultra Black ink and the uh, the William Shakespeare, which will be a it's kind of a burgundy. Yep, it's uh, called red. Velvet Red, but it's red. Uh, as we understand it, we haven't seen it yet, but it's uh, supposed to be like a, a brick red or a burgundy. So we've got a bunch of it on order, um, and it's actually up on the site. You can do back in stock notifications mm -hmm. for it. But uh, um, neat, uh, those are going to be those are going to be cool when they come in. So um, that's the week in Mont Blanc. Now jumping from Germany to Japan, uh, mm -hmm. we've got a couple of hot tamales here, uh, which is really not Japanese, but uh, best I could do. Um, the Sailor Pro Cure Earth uh, landed, and uh, this is kind of a kind of a cool pen. It's, uh, it definitely looks better than the original images, I think. We, we weren't sure what to think, and we thought that it would either be um, potentially all transparent, like the sky, or that it would be not transparent at all, and we were just seeing reflection in the pictures that we had seen earlier, um, and then it might be kind of opaque, but it's, um, it's not muddy at all like I thought that it might be. It's it's really kind of cool. It's really growing on me. Yeah, the translucency really, really shows up at the top. Uh, where the jewel is above the clip and on the section. Um, and, and then it's got that neat neat effect above the cap band, and it's really kind of a uh, – I've been using mine ever since, and a really good um, – a great ink I found for that is, of course, Mont Blanc Toffee Brown. Um, really seems to, to match, the, match the pen very well. So, uh, but uh, – Happy those came in came in, in full-size pro gear as well as the slim. Um, and they're very limited quantities for now. When, when um, Sailor comes out with a, a special like that, the first run is a very small production run, for, and, it's, and you're only going to get so many. And then four months later, they production catch up. catches up. Yeah, so uh, what we have, and, and we've been ordering every other day here, um, what we have is what we're going to have, and then in October, we'll get the rest of you know it'll come in, and then it'll be in abundance. Um, but um, this now this goes along with last year's, or actually it was a year and a half ago, wasn't it? Two years mm -hmm. ago. Two years um, ago, we saw it uh, in DC a couple of years ago. This one, or I don't know if we're no, talking about the same thing. Sky a couple of years ago. Yeah, the sky. Yeah, so yeah, th this goes along with the sky. So this is part of a you know four part series supposedly. Um, we'll see what they come up with next, but uh, it's cool. I, I, I like it, and it's a different color. There's not 
you know, there's a lot of brown pens and brown's maybe not the most attractive color, but um, I think this it's is done nicely. Interesting brown. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I, I like the little bit of transparency. I, I, I like the, the cap band where it's just a little bit of pop of almost orange. Um, very cool. So um, we also anyway. got in the Pilot Custom 912 with the Waverly nib. Uh, this nib is new to the U.S. this year. And I'm going to show that here. And if you're not familiar with the Waverly, I'll show you the picture. Uh, you've probably, if you're a vintage fan, you're probably familiar with this. You didn't even know it. Um, this is very similar to uh, the Schaefer snorkel nib that if you look at the, the image here, you can see how the very end of the nib, the very end of the tip is slightly upturned a little bit. Um, give you a little bit smoother writing experience. You can write upside down with this. Um, it's just a little bit different uh, uh, of a nib. It's a, a fairly rigid nib. It is not flexible. Um, but uh, just another interesting thing that Pilot's coming out with. Um, they got a lot, of, a lot of neat things in their 912 line. Um, so this is all part of the custom 912. Um, any other comments you want to have on this guy? No, you know, it's like we've said a, a thousand times before, it's really hard to go wrong with one of the, with one of the Japanese pens. Um, Sailor is phenomenal. Pilot is fantastic. Platinum's really good. Um, and it's exciting to see some of the cool stuff that is coming in from both of these great companies. Yeah, and, and Pilot is, is really constantly seems to be trying. Um, emphasis really seems to be on uh, the, the different nibs that are available. In in, uh, in Japan, the, the 912 is available in, in like some insane number of nibs. I forget the, the number off the top of my head, but um, the Waverly is one of them. And uh, it's just something different. Yeah. Um, they're, they're trying. It's, it's not that the U.S., side of the company doesn't want to it's it's sometimes japan um has a hard time letting go of it sometimes uh you know it's really difficult to try and guess what's going to make it in the u.s um, and they have to make a huge commitment so it's it's always a gamble uh, but it's really wonderful and encouraging that they're bringing in more and more interesting new things can we talk about the other pilot that's not here yet that's going to come we don't have it on the list. The new vanishing point? Yeah, that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be really cool. Um, new limited edition for 2016. Yes. Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you just say a few words about that? Other than the one fact word. that I, I'm getting one, and I don't know if you're getting one. but One word. Guioche. Yes. It's really cool. Um, Waves and trying to picture it in my head. Well, um, I'll find it. I'll find an image of it if you just want to. Yeah, it's it's a chase pattern. Anymore. It's got kind of squiggles like waves and uh, rings. I, I I I've only seen one or two pictures, uh, but it's it's really cool. Um, I got it here. It's got some texture. I I like that it's not uh, a color. Um, here, take a look at this right here. It, it does look like tire treads, yes, and you know, of course, Brian's getting a tire pen. Um, it's not ebonite. It's not ebonite. No, but you know, last year the twilight was really cool. You know, I loved that ombre look. Um, you know, faded from purple to blue to light blue, uh, but this is really kind of a great mix of old and new, and I think that this is a great combination. Uh, it, it looks really cool. Yeah, rhodium trim. It's very classy looking. Yep. Um, so we're excited that uh, we've already placed our order and we went heavy. So. Yeah, because I'm getting one. Because I'm not. I'm not <laughs> a, you know, I, it's funny. I keep saying I'm not a real vanishing point collector, and I've got three, four. You've got a counting, bunch. I got four that in my daily carry, not even counting the vintage ones that that you and I collect. So. Yep. Um, is neat. Can't wait. To, I can't can't wait for it to come. It's going to be great. Yep. Um, moving right along this week uh, with announcements um, right here at home in the United States, we've got a couple of uh, new additions to the Edison lineup. Um, long awaited the um, Edison Collier in burnished gold, and this. Uh, 
this replaces um, the uh, the name's escaping me right now. Uh, the last one, <laughs> um, but uh, <clears throat> nice looking pen. It's kind of a greenish gold um, metallic, oh, not metallic, but a greenish gold uh, pattern to it. The burnished gold replaced what was it? The silver marble. Silver marble. That's, I was. I don't know why I was silver flake, but yeah, silver marble. Yeah. So. You um, know, I, I'm I'm kind of torn. I'm I'm grateful that we're getting new pens. This one, I, I gotta tell you, it, I think it's gonna be one of those love or hate it, and it, it just does nothing for me. But I like swirly patterns. I like something that's a little brighter, a little, uh, I don't wanna say flashier, but but something with a little more, um, I'm bored in a meeting and I wanna be entertained kind of pattern. Wait a minute, so when we have a meeting, you need to be entertained? Well, no, not, not a meeting with you. It's a, it's a nice looking pen. It's not flashy, like you say. Um, it doesn't post. It's it, you know, it's, it's that big, big collier pen that everybody loves. Um, it's a, just a different because you know the other colliers are fairly, fairly loud. Look at me. This is uh, right. Um, this is yeah, this nice compared to the persimmon swirl, worlds yeah. apart. Yeah, so a, a nice looking pen. You know, it's it's very dark. You kind of have to roll it around in the light. But uh, uh, that's one. And then uh, the other news is a new pearlette coming um, in lapis lazuli flake this is pretty I like this and this, this is, is way this is, more my thing it's nice it's a nice it's blue uh, primarily blue it's got a little bit what do you say green in there um, I think so yeah it's uh, it's a nice nice looking pen it really is um, and in gold gold fill trim uh, number five nib on the pearlette um, Kind of reminds me of a, a Conway Stewart I used to have. And this is replacing the um, deep indigo. The deep indigo flake. Yeah. So we're replacing the dark blue with the bright blue. Lighter, brighter blue. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which I, I think is good because you know the other two colors are, are fairly dark. This has got a little bit of a, a, a of a pop to it. Um, so. Uh, that's the uh, that's the news from uh, this side of the the pond this week, uh, and um, if that wasn't enough, uh, also what came in this week are two brand new uh, Schaefer Preludes, and if you got the mailer, these were in there. Um, these are nice. These are really really nice looking pens. There's these blue, are pretty. blue with rose gold, and, and you know what I like about this is that you know rose gold is along with Along with the whole stealth thing that's going on, rose gold is very, uh, very much one of the in things. You know, you've got Visconti's got it, and uh, you know it, it, it's it's in. But this this rose gold is almost it's a dark rose gold. It's not pink. It's not you know it's very classy. It's not too feminine on that dark blue. It looks really really great. Yeah, it's a nice contrast. You know, I mean, it's, you know, sometimes you get, you get the rose gold and you're just like, well, okay, that's great. That's a great pen for a, a woman, but, um, you know, some men are maybe not going to be able to pull that off or you don't want to, you know, don't want to get that kind of flashy. I think this is a, um, it's a nice, nice looking pen. I mean, any, I think anybody can, can use this pen and it's good. Uh, fountain roller and ballpoint, of course. And then on the other side of the equation, uh, they have the black lacquer, which is really a cool pen. Um, With I'm the gunmetal trim. Yeah, a ruthenium it's, trim, gunmetal trim, um, ruthenium it's coated the nib. Black. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm kind of surprised Schaefer came out. I mean, this is like a stretch for Schaefer. These um, days. These days, yeah. I mean, Schaefer, Schaefer does everything well as long as it's stainless steel with, you know, steel trim or gold trim. Or uh, you know, black with gold trim. Black with gold trim or black with chrome trim. This is this is a little different. Uh, the Prelude is uh, is a nice size in the hand. It's uh, it's it's a little bit smaller. It's kind of in between. What do you say? That one hundred and the three hundred. I think so. In the lineup, I think yeah, so. It's, it's, it's a good size. It's not quite as bulky as the three hundred, but posted. Correct. It's a nice nice length. Um, it's got that triangular, pseudo-triangular section that the Prelude always has. 
You know, I think it's kind of an underrated, underappreciated pen. Oh yeah, absolutely. But this is not that expensive. No. Um, you know, the, but it's the, it's a really interesting look. Um, and it's it's the same same great nib that's on the one hundred, the three hundred. Yep. Um, you know, a, a slip cap on there, of course. Um, it's just a nice click. It's it's a great, really a great looking pen. So. Um, that's my, my weekly rant, I guess. I'm going to rant my weekly uh, wrap up. Of, and that's, that all came like this last week. Yep. Um, and actually, there was more, but we're going to run out of time, so I can't. We'll mention those next week. Um, we did get in some ink. Three, yep, three new bookbinder inks. Uh, we've been waiting for these for a while. And um, between bookbinders in Australia and AP in the US, we have both been tracking this thing. And of course, it's taking forever to get from Australia to here. And the last batch got here much more quickly. Um, so they kept apologizing. Um, they're just so wonderful to work with. Um, so three new colors. You've got Red Spitting Cobra, Blue Racer, and Ground Rattler. Ground Rattler is kind of a, kind of a graphite, like a, char uh, like a pencil gray. Uh, red is spitting cobra is kind of a bright red, and what's the last one? Blue, blue racer is uh, a really pretty medium blue. Um, we'll get those uh, swabs up on the site soon. Um, but uh, nice ink, great packaging, wonderful company. We've been very pleased. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's just cool stuff. I mean, you know, little yeah. it's cute. The packaging is great. You know, guys are great to work with. So. Um, anyway, um, that, that pretty much wraps it up this week for, for everything that came in. Uh, it was crazy. We, just it's crazy week. Just, just trying to keep up. Um, we got a little Q and A. You want to whip through that and uh, let's answer some questions. Yeah. Um, question number one came from Stacy. Uh, ironically, uh, about the Ultra Black, it says uh, she said, "Can the Ultra Black fountain pens be?" ordered with other nibs like the oblique medium for example I'm gonna let you take that one um, the ultra black is only available the ultra black fountain pen um, only available in fine or medium nibs only uh, and they're only available in a classic uh, which some of you may know as the 144 uh, actually it's a 145 because it's a screw cap uh, cartridge uh, converter filler or the Legrand or you may know it as the 146 the piston filler So no 149 uh, Fine and medium classic and Legrand and then you can get rollerballs and ball points and everything else so, But uh, fine and medium. That's it um, You get the next one. All right uh, uh, Question came in from Kyle. He says uh, I'm a newbie with two fountain pens um, a Metro and a Safari Well, that's a good place to start how often should I clean them? Well, totally subjective. Uh, we recommend that you clean them whenever they start to um, write poorly, if you're having a problem with skipping or clogging or any other issues with writing. Also, when you change inks, you should clean them well. Uh, and if you're going to stop using them and put them away, you should clean them. Uh, what else, Brian? Right. Change an ink, put it away. Um, I, I usually say every every third or fourth fill. Yep, yeah, just to keep everything clean and flowing well. Um, it also depends on which inks you have in there. Some inks require a little more maintenance. Um, some of the more dye intensive inks from like Noodlers or Private Reserve. Um, some of the inks with shimmer or other additives like the Diamine Shimmer Tastic or the J Herbin. Um, 1670 anniversary inks. Pigmented oh, inks too. Yep. So anything like that, um, you should clean it out a little more often. But yep. especially if you've got, you know, a Metro and a Safari, they should be easy to clean, low maintenance. Um, you shouldn't have a lot of problems with those. Just just give them a good cleaning, you know, every couple couple weeks, whenever, depending on how much you use them, and they'll they'll serve you well. You're Super off to a good just, start. Just always remember cold water and you don't need to take the whole thing apart. So. Yes, please do not take apart your Twisby if you ever get a Twisby. <laughs> Rant over. 
we, we, we had that happen this week. We had a lady come in with a, uh, uh, we did. what was it, Twisby Classic. And she gave it to somebody and somebody took it apart. And thank me, got ink all over themselves, and she, she put it back to put it back together, and it was amazing. It went back together, but anyway. Um, question number three from Pat: Are nib units available for Twisby Eco pens? Short answer is no. No. Uh, for the twenty eight ninety nine, Twisby came out with uh, the Eco. You know, it's a great price for a piston fill pen, but this time around to help keep the price down, uh, they decided to not have uh, interchangeable nibs. So whatever you order is what fits in there. Um, I know some people have said that you can pull them out and swap them, but they are not designed to swap out nib units like the other pens are. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, you can, you know, the, the general acknowledgement is you can use the Twisby mini nib unit, but you've got to take it out of the um, You've got to take the nib out of the collar and separate it from the, the feed in the collar uh, And then you also risk anytime you, you pull a nib and feed out you risk damaging the section etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, It's possible, but we don't recommend it. Yeah, unless you know what you're doing. Yes, and and not everyone uh, should be taking apart their nib units and, and trying to fit them into other pieces. Yeah. Some people can, but it's it's not recommended. But you you cannot buy separate nib units specifically for the eco. Right. So that hits the uh, the top three for this week. Um, mm -hmm. Let's uh, hit um, real quick what's going on on the blog. Some interesting stuff. We've got the new, we didn't know what to call it for a while. So was, was this last week the first official Midweek mojo. I think so. So we got the new new post on Wednesday, which is uh, artistically based. Um, uh, Chris is doing an awesome job in uh, in, in telling me you think so because um, we certainly do. Uh, he had a nice uh, July Fourth uh, red, white, and blue, very creative uh, midweek mojo. So expect to see that every Wednesday. Uh, we also brought about uh, our second week of uh, the WTF, which of course stands for where to focus, not the other thing that you think it stands for. Um, yes, we know what WTF stands for, uh, but that's not well, what we call it. Most people think of it, but uh, we decided to uh, give it a new meaning. We, we have a little fun with it. That's what yeah. we're doing. We're having a little fun with it. Um, and we focused on the Mont Blanc Contra Black because it, it had just come in and it's just a really a looker of a pen. There's some great pictures there. And, and all WTF is, is it's just all, uh, here's an overview of some of the great stuff that we've, we've taken during the week and that's it. It's just, it's eye candy, it's pen porn, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then uh, what we didn't talk about that's, uh, that it is noteworthy is this last week's Think Thursday. Uh, you're going to have to help me with this one because... I can't pronounce it, but the new... Um, J. Herbin 1670 Anniversary Inc., uh, the new brown, and I, I won't even try to pronounce it. I'm going to talk to seed you, but, of Cypress. Yes. <laughs> uh, we managed to get an advanced copy of uh, the last bottle, supposedly, that Execlair had um, to send out uh, to different people. And um, so Chris used that for the Think Thursday, and it's um, really a cool ink. Um, We'll have another blog post kind of recapping the colors, uh, hopefully in the next week. But this one, I think, fits in well. It's it's not your standard brown. It's reddish brown, and the gold sheen is really pretty. It's it, it, it's done well like the rest of, of the other colors. And um, I think it, it – it, actually, I was, I was just thinking this, but then I remembered, of course, uh, we took a picture of it with the new Sailor Pro Gear Earth. Uh, and it's it really a great match. Yes, it's a very good match. Very nice, nice color combination. So, um, I may, I may be out of ink on that uh, that earth here. I've got it right here. So maybe oh. I can get What'd a, you put a free, in there? Toffee brown. I have Mont Blanc toffee brown in there, which I think is a really good match. But it doesn't have any doesn't have any sparkle, anything in it. So you're gonna um, put sparkle in your pen? Well, I'll I'll follow your advice and I will clean it promptly when I'm done. But yes. Okay. So the broad nib, the broad nib, really on that, I think we'll we'll, we'll bring it out, and that's just yep. that's the the case with all the sixteen seventy inks is is and the, the wetter the nib, 
Yeah, and the shimmer tastic. The wetter the nib, the broader the nib, the better chance you have of getting uh, some of the effect of the ink. If you're writing with an extra fine nib, you know, uh, it, it's not going to show up as, as it's not going to be as readily apparent. Agreed. Agreed. So, um, I think that really uh, trying to keep it keep it short because it's so hot. Um, uh, I know people are laughing at those Wisconsin people. It's 80 degrees and they're they're dying. It's but. warm. Um, um, next week we are going to uh, take the week off. We've got a couple things going on that we'll be sharing down the road, um, but we will take next week off, and then we've got which one is this? One ninety eight or one ninety eight? Yeah. Can you so believe week, this? We're coming up on two hundred podcasts. I know. So uh, keep an eye out for that. There, we're going to have some interesting things coming up. So. Awesome. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that's it. That's it for this week. Now, uh, who's supposed to who's supposed to read this? I'm going to do this. <laughs> You're going to do uh, this. All right. Check us out on social media as Anderson Pens, and uh, definitely check us out on Instagram. We're doing some fun Instagram only contests, and uh, we've just finalized all of the prizes for a really cool giveaway that we will be starting in just another week or so once we get everything in-house um, these are going to be this is going to be a nice package so keep an eye for uh, some really cool contests cool um, blog is blog.andersonpens.com and the website is andersonpens.com thanks so much for listening to the podcast we will see uh, you in two weeks bye have a good night everyone <laughs>